welcome back today we are going to talk about uh, welding and joining that is our day 5 topic day 1 may we talked about introduction day 2 may we talked about material requirements day 3 may we talked about uh, design temp, uh, pressure design of piping on day 4 we talked about piping loads and stresses today the subtopics under welding and joining will be welding processes welder qualification and welder procedures joint efficiency and its impact once we cover these three topics, uh, we'll go through the quiz with 20 MCQs. Along with that, we'll have explanation to correct answers. So this is how we are going to cover this topic. So let's welcome Peter, uh, who will be going through all these explanations for these subtopics. So first, we'll uh, start with the safety talk. So let's begin. Hello, everyone. Today, we'll discuss safe lifting techniques to prevent injuries while lifting heavy objects. Warm up first. Before lifting anything heavy, take a moment to warm up your body. Do some light stretching or walk around to loosen your muscles. Get a firm grip. When lifting, make sure, make sure to get a firm grip on the load. Use both hands and keep the load close to your body for better control. Bend your knees. To lift, bend your knees and squat down. Use the strength of your legs to lift the load, not your back. No twisting. While carrying the load, avoid body. Instead, pivot with your feet to change direction. Ask for help. If the load is too heavy or awkward to lift alone, don't hesitate to ask for help or use lifting aids like dollies or carts. Take breaks. If you have to lift repeatedly, take short breaks between each lift. This will give your muscles time to rest and reduce the risk of strain. Remember, proper lifting techniques can help prevent back injuries and other muscle strains. Stay safe and use your body's strength wisely. Hello everyone, and welcome back to our 30-day beginner course on ASME B31.3. Today, we're going to dive into a topic that's at the core of piping fabrication, welding processes used in B31.3. Welding is a crucial aspect of constructing piping systems, and different welding processes are employed to join pipes and components securely. Let's take a closer look at these processes. Shielded metal arc welding, SMAW also known as stick welding, SMAW involves using covered electrodes that provide the filler metal and a flux coating for prote protection. It's a versatile and widely used method. Gas tungsten arc welding, GTAW commonly known as TIG welding, GTAW uses a tungsten electrode and an inert gas like argon for shielding. This process produces high-quality welds and is suitable for array materials. Gas metal arc welding, GMAW often referred to as MIG welding, GMAW employs a wire electrode and shielding gas to protect the weld from contamination. It's fast and suitable for various materials. Flux cord arc welding, FCAW FCAW uses a tubular wire electrode with flux inside. This process offers high deposition rates and is particularly useful for thicker materials. Submerged arc welding, saw saw involves welding under a layer of flux, providing deep penetration and high welding speeds. It's commonly used for heavy and thick materials. Electroslag welding, ESW ESW uses a molten slag to create the weld joint between thick materials. It's a specialized process often used for specific applications. Stud welding, this process involves jo joining studs to plates or pipes by heating the stud and the workpiece, then forging them together. By understanding the various welding processes, engineers and fabricators can select the most appropriate method for each situation to ensure strong and reliable joints in the piping system. That wraps up today's video. In our next topic, we'll explore welder qualifications and welding procedures. So, stay tuned and keep learning. Hello everyone, and welcome back to our 30-day beginner course on ASME B31.3. Today, we're going to explore an important aspect of welding, 
welder qualifications and welding procedures. Ensuring the skills and expertise of welders, as well as following proper welding procedures, is crucial for the integrity of the piping system. Let's delve into the details. Welder qualification. Before a welder begins working, their skills are rigorously tested and certified. This process verifies that the welder is capable of producing quality welds that meet the specific standards. Welding Procedure Specification WPS A WPS is a comprehensive plan that outlines the exact steps and parameters for carrying out a welding operation. It ensures consistency and quality in the welding process. Essential Variables these are the critical parameters within a WPS that directly impact the quality of the weld. They include factors like welding technique, material type, electrode, current, and more. Pre-qualified WPS Certain standardized welding procedures are considered pre-qualified for commonly used joints. These procedures have a proven track record of reliability and can be used without further testing. Procedure Qualification Record, PQR A PQR is a documented record of the testing and results of a specific WPS. It provides evidence that the welding procedure produces sound welds. Performance Qualification, this demonstrates a welder's ability to create sound welds as per the established standards. It involves practical welding tests to ensure the welder's competency. Visual inspection, weld quality can often be determined through visual examination. Inspectors check for visible defects like cracks, porosity, and proper weld shape. Non-destructive testing, NDT in cases where visual inspection is not sufficient, methods like X-ray and ultrasound are used to assess the integrity of the weld without damaging the joint. By ensuring proper welder qualifications and following approved welding procedures, engineers and fabricators can maintain the strength and reliability of the piping system. That concludes today's video. In our next topic, we'll explore joint efficiency and its impact on pressure design. So, stay tuned and keep learning. Hello and welcome back to our 30-day beginner course on ASME B31.3. Today, we're going to delve into a key factor in pressure design, joint efficiency and its impact. Understanding joint efficiency is essential for accurately designing piping systems to handle different pressure condi conditions. Let's explore this topic in more detail. Joint efficiency, e joint efficiency is a crucial parameter that determines how strong a welded joint is compared to a solid pipe wall. It's represented as a ratio and affects how much stress the joint can withstand. It's affecting joint efficiency, the quality of the weld, material properties, and the type of joint all influence joint efficiency. A well executed weld and high strength materials contribute to higher joint efficiency. Impact on pressure design, the joint efficiency directly impacts the calculations for allowable stress and required wall thickness in a piping system. A higher joint efficiency allows for higher allowable stress and potentially thinner walls. Calculating joint efficiency, ASME B31.3 provides specific formulas to calculate joint efficiency for different types of joints, joints considering factors like the type of weld and inspection methods. Corrosion allowance, in pressure design, it's important to consider the impact of corrosion on the pipe's thickness. A corrosion allowance is added to the required thickness to account for material loss over time. By understanding efficiency, engineers can make informed decisions about the design of piping systems, ensuring their safety and reliability under various operating conditions. That wraps up today's video. In our next topic, we'll explore flange types and facing configurations. So, stay tuned and keep learning.
so thanks uh, peter for explaining the subtopics under welding and joining so let's see what we are going to cover on day 6 day 6 we'll talk about flanges and bolting we'll talk about these three subtopics flange types facing configurations bolting requirements torque values gasket selection and installation so this is how we are going to cover uh, along with these subtopics we'll talk about safety topic at the beginning then we'll have a quiz with 20 mcqs along with the explanation to the correct answer so this format we are going to cover for all these 30 30 days so thank you for watching see you in the next part